it's been a whole day and I'm still at a loss for words. I I still don't really know what to say as far as the um the untimely passing of Bray Wyatt. I SmackDown just went off and it was pretty much a uh, Bray Wyatt slash Terry Funk tribute show. But it still doesn't feel real, you know what I mean? Like the fact that Bray Wyatt isn't here anymore, that doesn't feel real. The fact that Triple H tweeted out Bray Wyatt passed away. It doesn't feel real. Bro was only 36 years old. A year older than me. I'm 35. I'm getting ready to, to turn 36 in January. And that's how old Bray Wyatt was. And he's not here anymore. He's not here for his family. He's not here for his children. His girl, Jojo. His brother. His sister. His father. His friends. He's not here. And I struggle to really grasp the fact that he's not here. I, I know I, I sounds like I'm repeating myself, but it just doesn't feel real to me. You know what I mean? Like there were reports saying that Bray Wyatt was supposed to be coming back soon. He um was out since the Royal Rumble, since after the Royal Rumble, um, due to an illness, which we found out was COVID. And things were supposedly looking up for him. He was supposed to be getting better. He was supposed to be coming back, but he ended up passing away due to a heart attack. And he's not here. He's not here anymore. <clears throat> um. I don't know, man, like, the thing that brings me the most comfort, though, is hearing the positive things about Bray Wyatt, Wyndham Rotunda, and the one constant thing I kept hearing and seeing is the fact that he was a good person, he was nice, his smile, his laugh, the way he could just light up a room, you know, um, I heard, I, I saw a video from Miro, and he recalled his time when he first started in the WWE, even before he started in the, in the WWE, and he talked about, he told a story about Bray Wyatt, and um, he said that Bray Wyatt remembered him. Even before he was signed, he remembered him, and when he when Bray saw Miro, he welcomed him and said, I remembered you, and he made him feel welcome, and that always stuck out with him. That always stuck out with Miro. And that was just a constant thing I just kept seeing from people that knew him, that he was such a loving and caring and welcoming person. He was truly a light. He was truly the color red in the world of black and white, you know. His light was, it, it, he was a light. The fact that he carried around a lantern as his gimmick, you know, that was... That gimmick was him. He was that light. He was that that beacon of, you know, kindness and warmth. <sighs> My heart truly breaks for his family. The fact that a father has to bury his son. Siblings have to bury their brother. Children have to see their father in a box. That's crazy to me, man. And, um... Like I said, SmackDown was tonight. This is this is a SmackDown review slash Bray Wyatt tribute. Um, SmackDown was tonight, and I will say this: SmackDown, well, not SmackDown, but WWE. When it comes to that production, when it comes to putting it together, a video package for anybody, they are top notch. That video package for Bray Wyatt moved me to tears, man. I was bawling i was <laughs> i've been crying off and on since i heard the news but that video package did me in and then they did the 10 bell salute for terry funk and bray wyatt and the crowd just started singing he's got the whole world in his hands and then spotlight onto the infamous infamous bray wyatt rocking chair and the light just shined on that rocking chair. And I was like, yeah, y'all got me again. <laughs> and I started crying again. 
Um, there were matches on here. Um, you had Rey Mysterio versus Grayson Waller. Rey Mysterio won. Um, Selena Vega wrestled EO Sky for the um, WWE Women's Championship. EO Sky won. <laughs> I do got to talk about this because this did make me laugh. So Cody Rhodes made an appearance. He um cut a promo. And it, was, it wasn't so much of a promo. It was just him sharing his memories of Terry Funk. And this led to a what was supposed to be a hardcore match. A hardcore t- tornado match between the Shriek Prophets and the Brawling Brutes. And <laughs> this was the least hardcore, hardcore match I've ever seen in all my years of watching wrestling. They had a table spot at the end, which was cool. Like It was like, okay, fine, we, we got some action. <laughs> and then Michael Cole had the nerve to say, no, no, Terry Funk is watching this match and smiling. I'm like, are you sure about that? <laughs> I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure. It was a fun match, but... A hardcore match, it was not. They could have just made it a no disqualification match and just left it at that, but you know, whatever it is, what it is. It, it was a fun match. It was fine. It was fine for all it was worth. And then the main event was LA Knight facing Finn Balor. And um, also at Payback, it's official. You have LA Knight wrestling The Miz. Um, they showed a video of The Miz talking to TMZ about LA Knight and blah, blah, blah. LA Knight came out and. This was kind of fitting because LA Knight was the last person to wrestle Bray Wyatt, and Finn Balor was one of um, Finn, uh, one of Bray Wyatt's biggest rivals. So this main event made sense, and Bray Wyatt. I mean, um, you can tell that the effect that Bray Wyatt had on LA Knight because he was in the ring, he was fighting back tears a little bit. He was getting a little emotional talking about Bray Wyatt, but he held it together, man. He brought it back around, cut a phenomenal promo. promo Cut a promo on The Miz as well. He did a hilarious impression of The Miz, which sounded spot on. And then he ended his promo by saying, Miz, a wise man once told me, the next time you see me, run. Said it just like Bray Wyatt. It was fitting. LA Knight got the win. And then after the match, the lights went out. Like Bray Wyatt was about to come out. And then it ended with Bray Wyatt's lantern in the middle of the ring. And it was just... It was just a beautiful show. It was a really beautiful show. WWE did the damn thing when it can't come. When it, they normally are on point when it comes to their tributes, when it comes to their video package, when it comes to you know paying respects to superstars that are not here anymore. So, it was a beautiful show. It was fun. It was emotional. Throughout the night, they were sharing different tweets from different wrestlers who um, were just sharing their memories with Bray Wyatt. Um, Alexa Bliss couldn't be there because this was very last minute. Um, a lot of a lot of um, plans that were originally in place for SmackDown were canceled. Um, they did have a whole bunch of matches that did take place, like I described, but the initial plans for SmackDown were canceled. And reports were saying that they made travel arrangements for anybody who could make it out to the show. Um, you saw Eric Rowan there. You saw. Um, um, What's that boy's name? Braun Strowman. He was there, and they were both very emotional. Two members, two of the remaining members of the Wyatt family. Um, Alexa Bliss put out a video on, on Instagram saying that she wished she could be there, but it, because it was so last minute, she couldn't get a flight that would get her to the show in time, so she couldn't be there. Um, Seth Rollins put out a video on, on Instagram saying that he really thought about going, but he thought about a conversation he and Bray had. Um, Seth was calling to check in on Bray after the passing of Brody Lee and um, the conversation ended with um, Bray telling Seth you know hold hug, hug your baby, baby girl so Seth said that's what I'm gonna do he ended up staying with his family and you know in a way honoring Bray Wyatt through you know being with his family so yeah I um struggled doing this I was gonna I was struggling with doing a video last night talking about Bray Wyatt. And as a content creator, it's kind of walking a fine line on whether you should or shouldn't do something and keep it respectful when it comes to the wrestler, making it seem like you're talking about the wrestler and not doing something just for clicks and views and likes or whatever. And ultimately, when it came down to it, it wasn't the fact that I should or shouldn't make the video. It was just the fact that I couldn't. I honestly couldn't find the words to say. I couldn't 
imagine composing myself the way I'm composed now. I've had time to really process this a little bit better, but I, I just really couldn't find the words to say to, you know, describe my feelings for Bray Wyatt, but I, I do have the words now. Bray Wyatt, you, your impact was felt throughout the world of wrestling, maybe more than you really realized, but people really love you. Your friends, your family, the fans truly love you. Your fireflies are always here. We're always going to be here. We're always going to keep the essence of Bray Wyatt. Your memory will live on through us, man, through your friends, especially through your family, your children. Your legacy will always live on through them. So I'm going to close this out by saying thank you for everything, Bray Wyatt. Um... Thank you for the memories. Um, thank you for your creativity. Thank you for sharing your your gift with the world. Um, just thank you for everything. Thank you, Bray. Thank you, man.